Hello everyone, this is Damon with Easy Green Screen, and before I start this tutorial, I just want to thank photographer Max Kreis and guitarist Gretchen Mann for letting me use this image for this tutorial video. I've got links to their websites in the description to this video, so check those out if you want to see some really great photography or check out some great music. So to get started, I'm going to explain what I'll be doing here. Is I'm going to be showing you how to optimize the extraction for um, this red colored hair against a green screen. Now anytime you're shooting with red hair against a green screen it can be challenging but with easy green screen there are some adjustments that can really help. And to start I'm going to do this with a dual mask extraction and so I've already made this selection of the hair and when doing this if you think that you're going to have to make some adjustments to the dual mask settings. It's always good to only include the sections of hair that you want that to target. So for example, when I made the dual mask selection, I did not select areas of the skin or the clothing. I kept it just with the areas where I thought that the green screen affected the hair color and those areas that we will want to target the adjustments for. It takes a few extra seconds to do that but it's really worth it and you'll see when we get into easy green screen what I'm talking about. So before I actually extract this I'm just going to show you a little bit about what's going on with the color of this hair when it's shot against the green screen. So if I take my color sample tool and I just sample the green screen you see our hue was 130 or 113 with a saturation of 37 and a brightness of 59 if I sample one of these strands of hair, I'll try to get right in the center of the hair. You see the hue is 103, which is still in the green spectrum, saturation of 41, and a brightness of 52. So keep these values in mind here. When we sample the actual hair color, you see that the hue is 10, the saturation is 69, and the brightness is 27. So a couple of things that come to mind is this hue was really shifted by the green screen and it turned that hair a green color. But secondly, and just as important, the brightness value, if you sample around in different parts of this hair, you see the brightness is staying around 25 to 30 percent brightness. And when you sample these flyaway strands of hair, you see the brightness is up over 50 percent. So what's happening is not only is the green screen turning the, um, these flyaway hairs green, it's also making them much brighter than the actual hair color. So to get the best extraction, we're going to need to, um, to compensate for both of those things. So I'll just um, extract this now. I'm just going to run Easy Green Screen in the dual mask mode. And the first initial extraction we get with the default settings might not look too great with this color of hair against the green screen but there is a lot of things in easy green screen we can adjust to correct for that and so the first thing I'm just gonna put this against a solid color and I start with 50 percent gray just to see what we're working with I'm going to zoom in just so we can see the hair a little bit better the first thing I notice is that I don't think it got quite all the green out with the default settings. And I'm going to go into the spill correction. And the first thing I'll do is I think I'm going to turn this up a bit to around 60%. That's a little bit better. But I think what's going on with this image too is this um, spill color range warms for the dual mask mode. This is the range of colors that is targeted within that spill correction region that we lassoed before we extracted. This is the range of colors that it targets for the spill correction. So I'm going to turn this all the way down so you can just see what happens. And you can see we are not targeting as wide of a range of color in the hair to be corrected for the green spill. So some of that spill comes back. So I think that the default of value of 75 might not have been enough. So I'll turn this back up to 90 here. You see that looks a bit better. I'm going to go all the way up to 100 with this and just see what that looks like. That actually does look quite a bit better. You can see it's 75. 
it's just a hint of that green spill and at 100 it looks quite a bit better and so this is an Adobe 1998 color profile image and I think that's why we're able to go up to 100 with sRGB you usually can't go all the way up to 100 because you'll start affecting a lot wider of a range of colors and I'm not going to get into the technical reasons of why but usually with Adobe 1998 you have a little more freedom to push that value up a little bit higher so that's the first adjustment that I would make to this image I'm going to go back to the main menu here I'm going to go into the um, key and mask settings so I see that we are losing some of those flyaway strands of hair that we would want to save so the first thing I'm going to do is turn up this smart radius. I'm going to go all the way up to 250 and this was a very high resolution image and so I think we can go up a little higher with this and then I'm going to show you the next thing. I like to do this with blonde hair or red hair but not with dark brown hair but with blonde or red I like to use this replace and I'll just show you the mask here, the difference between the um, blend and replace. Now if we use replace, what this is doing is taking Photoshop's smart radius um, adjustment and it's completely replacing the area in the mask that Easy Green Screen had already calculated. If we use blend, it's going to blend what Easy Green Screen calculated with Photoshop's smart radius tool. Now, you see with um, with blend you don't lose as much encroaching into the hairline but it's not as smooth on the transition because it's blending those two masks together and with replace I think we get a more natural blend now with blonde hair you have to be careful because this replace will come in here and Photoshop's algorithm tends to partially erase the blonde hair so I think it's best to look at it against the solid color and just make your best judgment on which mode looks better and in this case I think the replace mode does look a little bit better so we'll use that now I'm going to go back to the main menu here I'm going to go into this edge hair coloring now I'm going to show you what happens here it looks decent against um, solid gray if we change this background color, I'm going to go up to white here. It actually even looks a little bit better against white than it does against gray. We can start seeing some more of those edge hairs stand out. But what's going to happen is if we go down to a darker gray, it starts having this haloing. And what is happening here is if you remember when we sampled the color of those hairs before we extracted, these areas where we're getting a lot of the green to mix in to the hair, it's the, the green screen brightness really took over and just kind of made that these single strands of hair almost a solid color and, and it was a solid green color and so which was brighter than this new background so that luminosity is really showing through. So what we can do for a person with dark hair what you can do is um, go to this brightness shift and shift the brightness darker. I'm just going to go down to negative 50 just to see how that looks. And you see that did darken up the edges of the hair. And now if we go and change our background color, if we go a little darker, the hair still looks pretty decent. Against the white background, it still looks pretty good as well. So with somebody who's got darker hair, you can often get away with um, shifting the brightness of this down and it only affects two pixels in from the edge. This is the width of that effect. And usually for those flyaway strands of hair, two pixels is a pretty good value. And, and so if you want your image to be able to be placed in the widest range of background colors for a dark hair person um, shift this down for a blonde hair person it'll be the opposite you'll want to shift this value up now you can even fine-tune a bit further with this color blend um, this is going to force color into the edge of the hair so just let me demonstrate 
how that works. By default, this is off. So the opacity of this setting is zero and it starts with the same width of two pixels. So if I turn the opacity up, we'll just go up to 50 to see how that works. You don't really see too much of a difference. I'm gonna turn this blending width all the way up to 100 pixels. I often like to go a little bit wider with this adjustment than I do with the brightness. I'm going to turn this all the way off to see how much difference we see. We don't really see too much difference and I think that is because the um, spill correction already did a pretty good job. But this is more of um, an aid to aid in the spill correction if you need to manually change the color. And you can see when I go up to 100% opacity, you can see that that color does look a little bit better. So I think I'm gonna, I don't usually like to go up to 100, I'm just gonna go up to about 80, just to, um, that way it blends a little bit better and doesn't look like it's such a solid hue around the edge. Now the last thing I'll discuss here is this change hair blending color. Now by default, this starts with a hue of 25, a saturation of 40, and a brightness of 50. Now this does not actually blend this color straight into the hair. It blends in a color blend mode if you know about Photoshop blending modes. And so what that actually does is blends in the hue and the saturation but not so much the brightness. That way you can get away with this same default value for different shades of hair whether it's uh, blonde or brown or red you know, reddish brown in this case, that this default value usually works okay. But you can fine tune that. If you're on CC, you'll get a color picker. If you're on CS6 or below, Photoshop did not allow me to program this to give you the color picker. So you'll have to manually fine tune your color if you want to. But in CC, we can just go in and try to pick a color and just watch it change until we think it looks the best and really fine-tune how this is working. I think somewhere in there actually right here actually right there I think blends that pretty well so now if we look we've got a pretty good blend with this hair into this 50% gray background the color is good, the luminosity is pretty good, but now let's check this against um, different shades. So I'm going to go back up to pure white. I think this still looks really good against pure white. Even into a darker gray with 35% brightness, I think it looks pretty good. Now as we darken the color of the background, that color blending that we did may have been a bit much. But um, you can fine tune that as needed. Now one thing I'll point out is it's really difficult to get an extraction that looks perfect on every single color of background. But if you use this method, it can give you the best flexibility to place that extraction into a variety of backgrounds. And you can always fine tune the, these settings that you use to work best with the background that you choose. So you can usually get something that looks good for the background you are using if you have an idea of about the shade of the background. And not just with um, neutral backgrounds too. Let's go try some other colors. So looks really good there. Against blue it looks pretty good. Against green, it's we extracted off green and put it back in green, but it, it looks good here. And I think those settings that we used actually gives a lot of flexibility um, for putting this into a different background. So one last tip I have is that if you went through the trouble to create some settings that you think you might want to use again in the future, it's a good idea to create a preset and that will save you all this work that we just did. So to do that, um, from the easy green screen main user interface, you click the manage presets and we'll just call this red hair green screen just to give it a name. 
and you'll get this window that is asking you whether you want to use the auto spill correction opacity or if you want to turn that off and use the exact spill suppression opacity and usually this doesn't make too much of a difference but in this case I'm going to tell it to um, turn the auto spill correction opacity off and I'll explain to you the difference there that's referring to this value for the spill correction opacity and the reason you're given a choice here on what to do is sometimes you'll want a preset that you can use for different shooting and lighting conditions and in that case it'll auto calculate this spill correction opacity each time because that can vary based on your lighting conditions if you know your lighting is consistent and you just want to say hey use this exact value that I chose in the preset you choose in your preset to turn the auto spill correction opacity off so in this case it will always use the value of 60 so I'm going to exit easy green screen now and I'm going to rerun this and show you the preset that we have. And so if we go up to our presets window, we see that preset that we just saved. And it usually takes 15 seconds or so. Depends on the amount of changes it needs to make away from the default settings so time can vary a little bit let's look at this against the background color and you see that that saved the last background color that we had in our preset you can of course change that as well so anyway after you've set your preset then you can come in and any of those settings that we used we can fine-tune and you see for instance in our edge hair color if you bring in a different image and you think you don't need as much of the brightness shift in your hair you could shift that down but it just gives you a good starting point for those settings and then you can work from there I also have another video uh, for this same image that shows in Photoshop how to manually fine-tune both the mask and the edge hair color even more if you need to fine tune your images further so please be sure to watch that video as well thanks for watching and if you're interested at all in easy green screen please be sure to visit our website that is easygreenscreen.com